Well, before play started a week ago, all 12 teams arrived. There was a big party for all the girls, and Jada Coleman, Oklahoma softball center fielder, was there. And for some reason, she autographed uh, Connecticut manager Brian Glenn's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. Yeah, it's been over a week now. I mean, Jada Coleman is a star. Look at that. She's left-handed, writing that. You know, Michelle is a lefty. Those autographs when you're writing with your left hand, not an easy thing to do without smearing it, right? Very difficult, yes. So does that count as a tattoo that Brian Glenn is supposed to get from winning state? No. He told the girl. It doesn't. There. But thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Amanda, happy International Left-Handers Day. Yeah, oh. Today is the day of you. Yeah, this. Poor Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> yes. Oh, Michelle. Awesome. 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 <laughs> Michelle has a love of lefties, That's for right. sure. Danny Katansky, fouls. <laughs> it always happens at the World Series, yep. and I feel like there's always a really good left-handed pitcher at the World Series. Mm -hmm. Seen a couple this week. Yeah, we have. Remy Haggerty did a good job, too, for North Carolina. Zanary mm -hmm. Hughes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Solid contact from Danny Katansky. She's got herself a single. What a good job. With two strikes for Danny Katansky to short up and get to this up and in pitch, kept her barrel above the ball, kept her hands above the ball. 0-2 hit to lead off the inning for Danny Katansky. Second hit of the game for Connecticut. Kaylee Glenn will step up now. Ambry Ramos was able to strike out the side in the first. This Connecticut team can swing it. Watching at regional, seeing them come through their regional tournament. You could just see the way they explode at pitches and so that's going to be the key right there for Ramos is she's just going to have to continue to use that change up which is so effective she throws a lot of strikes too to work from the hat runner up looking Want your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League Baseball or Softball? Visit PlayLittleLeague.org and enter your address to find a Little League community program near you. You guys were talking about how Connecticut can put up runs as Holly Kuhn steps in. Sunday, 11 runs against Italy. Tuesday, 12 runs in 9 innings against Canada. Then nine runs again on Wednesday against Italy, and then they run with Puerto Rico 10 nothing, Averaging over nine and a half runs per game this week. Well, manager Glenn told us that he felt like they had a really good offense, but in their district tournament, sectionals, and state, he felt like the bats were good, but never really clicked. And then in regionals, as you mentioned, Michelle, the bats just got hot the third into the World Series. That, you know, there was a lot of pressure that this team felt, though, to make it to state and to win state. And that's why manager Glenn said, hey, if we win state, I'll get a tattoo, because that was just a really big moment for this team. What do you got for Jasmine Guerrero? She keeps it from sneaking out to left field. Two on. Well, Jasmine Guerrero is playing towards second base, and just the way that Holly Coon gets this hit more toward the five six hole good job by jasmine to go down and keep it on the infield but playing a little bit up the middle it looked like it could have been a routine ground ball it's a base hit oh. addie mckenna hansen is her biggest fan watching i believe she could be tripod the cat <laughs> <laughs> Tripod has three legs. Yes. Hence the name. Yes. Tripod. Just in case. Yes. Yeah. She's a big softball fan, we're told. Yes. And Tripod has become a star this week, and so has Addie McKenna Hansen, both mm -hmm. of them. Oh. I mean, the one thing about playing a lot of games like Connecticut has this week, you get a lot of TV time. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Even TV time for your cat. <laughs> exactly. My tripod is now famous.
That was a big cut by Addie. She is hitting 313 on the week. She has two older siblings, Tyler and Nolan. now for Embry. Okay, Embry Ramos goes to this change up again. She has been changing speeds so well. Pops it out of her hand and she follows in the release with her hand to the catcher's glove. Love the way that she is throwing out a lot of confidence today. Throwing a lot of strikes. Only seven mm -hmm. balls that she's thrown. Yeah, and she's doing such a good job of working that outer half of the plate, Amanda. You know, a lot of pitchers love to throw on that arm side of the plate. So as a righty, you want to throw inside to right-handed hitters. But she naturally comes across her body. There's the changeup again. And, and I love the way, as you are mentioning, her follow-through on that because she follow-throughs out. That almost catches the eye of the hitter, right? Because it looks explosive, so it looks like it helps her sell that pitch. To back and again Ambry strikes out the side how about Ambry Amanda she has gotten every out herself to give a strikeout <laughs> amazing job by Ramos wow she's looking good today Michelle Texas on top here in our third place game at the World Series Jasmine Guerrero getting the RBI the difference right now It'll be seven, eight, nine up, starting with Caitlin Lau. That's one heck of a special talent. Can't touch her nose with her tongue. But the, so we mentioned this is the third place game, but for the first time ever, ladies, the Little League Softball World Series Championship game is on ABC. Coverage begins this afternoon at 3 Eastern. The girls from Massapequa, New York, take on Winterville, North Carolina, and that's right here about eight miles away from the stadium. That Winterville, North Carolina team. Audrey O'Connell ready. Yeah, North Carolina can really hit the ball. To see if New York's pitching can step up and shut them down. Good swing here by Kate Lamau, but that could, that one that we have coming up this afternoon is going to be a great one. It is going to be a packed house. Two teams that have just really, I think, gotten better as the week has gone into this championship game. Yeah, absolutely. New York um, coming into yesterday's game could have only played two games and so they, but offensively they really came alive yesterday it was great to see and North Carolina just a lot of fun to watch they feed off the crowd it's just a great environment had a really intense walk-off plan a couple right. nights ago boy but this North Carolina team it's like they've been down in their last couple of games and they just punch right back they keep their composure so it makes them a dangerous team to play Absolutely. highly motivated team play with that extra little chip on their shoulders Grace Weber is strikeout number two. And Weber is going to use this pitch going up and away. Look at the movement on this pitch. It's a rise ball. It's got a little bit of up, a little bit of out spin. Second strikeout of the game for Grace Weber. So again, we will have that championship game for you at 3 Eastern for the first time on ABC. Should be a lot of fun. But here we've got our third place game between Texas and Connecticut. Clara Becknell playing at second base this afternoon. Grace Weber wants it. Three up, three down. Texas on top by a run. Taylor Swift safe because her songs are really good. Taylor Swift out. Taylor Swift out. Taylor Swift safe. They must be fouled. Taylor Swift, absolutely safe. She's just the queen. We're talking about this in the car ride over here. Are you surprised how many Taylor Swifts out there were in that? Yes. I was, yes. Yeah, I'm very surprised. I was too. I'm safe for Taylor Swift. I believe you guys. Definitely safe. Safe. 
I would even go home run if that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, are you safer out on uh, Taylor Swift? I've listened to it every day to get ready before heading to the field. <laughs> Super safe. Super, super, super safe. <laughs> I'm told next year we're going to add home run as an option. Grace, Grace Weber to lead off for Connecticut. Henry Ramos has gotten some good strikeouts in this game. Six strikeouts through two against a Connecticut team that does not strike out very much. In six games coming into this game, they've only struck out 21 times. There's three in a row. Let's check in with Chris. Courtney, people come from all over to watch this event, and I want to introduce you to nine-year-old Kylie Johnson, who you see on your screen. She's from Chesapeake, Virginia, and she was watching Zanaria Hughes on our TV pitch this week. She's a pitcher herself, and she said, I want to go watch her play. So she told her dad. Dad said, sure. They came down early the week they got to meet Samaria after the game take some pictures she got some advice from her they were watching yesterday and she said dad we got to go back today for the last day and here they are and she got a southwest shirt to represent Samaria's team I love it yeah we sat there and we're right next to them whenever Kylie got to meet Samaria the other day after the game and it was one of the most amazing oh. World Series moments to watch Zanaria sit there and give her advice and seeing Kylie just look up to Zanaria with such big eyes. That's what it's all about. Spreading the love of the sport, inspiring the next generation. Yeah, he knows we need to see Kylie playing on this field someday. Audrey O'Connell and Clara Becknell is there. Wholesome content alert. This is the meeting between Zanaria and Kylie. <laughs> Thank you for coming. They took a picture together. Absolutely adorable. So the three things that Zanaria told Kylie for her advice was one, practice as much as you can. Two, whenever you have ups and downs, remember to push through. And then three, have fun and never give up. Passing on that advice to that one. Love, love, love point three. <laughs> oh, and Amanda and Michelle wanted to meet Zanaria as well. <laughs> yeah. This was before the game. <laughs> <laughs> Zamiri Hughes in Texas, they are up 1-0. Emery Ramos, we would have dealing in a circle. <laughs> to create opportunities and experiences for families and communities. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of children around the world. Final day of the World Series here in Greenville, North Carolina. The third place game, Texas and Connecticut. Cammie Mitchell hops one back to Grace Weber. Grace Weber has done a nice job of settling into this game and being really confident. Normally, Grace Weber throws. Oh, there's Buddy the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Amanda is <laughs> smitten. Oh, Buddy <laughs> is a staple here he in Greenville. At this field, he's, pause. he's a season ticket holder. Yeah, for that, that's his team. <laughs> that's there. He's always here. Saw some athletes and limited softball pro players get to meet him as well. Yeah. Guys, he really has been here every single day, all week. Every day you look up, and there he is. Yeah, we can see him from the booth, which is great. He's a true fan. <laughs> the unofficial mascot of the Little League Softball World Series. <laughs> Giada Green punches it to center. Giada Green hitting out of the 11 hole has been outstanding for Texas. Hitting 375 coming into this game. It's very clutch at the bottom of the lineup. What I was going to say about Grace Weber before getting distracted by Buddy, which our producer Chris Damiani totally knew what happened, but great Grace Weber is more known for that curveball moving away from his right-handed hitters, but 
in this game, just like that pitch right there. She's really changed up her game plan to give these Texas hitters a different look. I mean, she's thrown 28 innings coming to this game. They've seen her a lot on TV, know really what her strategy is to work that curveball in the outer half, but today she's been throwing more inside. Holly Kuhn was in the exact position she needed to be, and a little late on the throw, trying to turn the double play, but they do get Giada Green going to second. Well, and Amanda, to your point, Texas has been making adjustments moving up onto the plate. On this one, though, she backs off knowing that she had just gotten an inside pitch. Good job by Kuhn to get the lead runner. Andre O'Connell at second, covering. So Kuhn and O'Connell up the middle to get that second out of the inning. Top of the order for Texas for the second time. Riley Little walked to lead off the game. And so you can see Riley Little, her toes are right up on that chalk line, knowing that Weber was throwing that pitch as you talked about, Amanda. But then once she comes back inside, they're like, oh, I better back off a little <laughs> bit, like she did. Yeah. yeah. Just good adjustments by Grace Weber to probably talk it over with her pitching coach and talk about the game plan coming into this game. It's actually Mike Bonanno who calls pitches for Connecticut. His daughter Maddie was a pitcher. to look at this play. Ever Ramos going out to talk to the umpire. A sweet play by Holly Kuhn to pull that ball pulled her toward the 5-6 hole and it's a good play by the shortstop athletic O'Connell coming over to cover but this is going to be overturned. They are reviewing this in Williamsport. Call in the field was that the runner was out. Good hustle by Jaden Serrato to get herself to second base, go hard with that ground ball toward the left side, make sure she goes in sliding. Though her foot clearly got to the base before the throw did. That's a great look right yeah, there. That's the look right there. It's very obvious that she's safe. <laughs> Defensively, outstanding play. Look at her. She's keeping the faith. <laughs> yeah, both the Texas base runners are still at their bases. Looks like Edward Ramos is going to come off with the runner in scoring position, but nobody <laughs> to pitch to him. Yeah, he'll be the uh, 13th in the batting order yeah. for Texas. <laughs> So Amber Ramos at the plate. Let's just listen in to her dad, Edward Ramos, the manager, during this at bat. Listen, listen. Hey, one for timing, okay? One. But listen, when we do go, I need to up the middle. I can't do this, hey, with a purpose. Hey, and I mean it with a purpose. Jaden, in the outfield, you're scoring, so your foul has to be good. You understand that, Nine? Once for time because of all this. No. Hey, but your shot through the middle line drive. I don't want to get here and do this. I want to get here and extend, finish. Get that hip into something. Okay, so Connecticut was making a defensive substitute substitution. That's the holdup. It looks like Emily Sparingo will go play third. 
They've had more Ramos some quality time to speak to his daughter about some mechanical adjustments and approach at the plate. As we've learned, no lead is safe in this World Series, so if Texas can bring these two home, that would be huge. Andrew Ramos certainly is trying her hardest. And Jamie Serrato retreating back to third safely. Bases loaded with two outs. Ramos just attacks this ball and mashes it, does exactly what her dad asked her to really extend, let that ball jump off that barrel. She bashes it through the 5-6 hole and then a good shot by Serrato getting back to third base when Coach sends her back. A good base running by James Serrato in this inning. So now the shortstop, Jasmine Guerrero, fouls off the first pitch behind her. She the RBI in the first. Another one of those new faces for Texas is Jasmine Guerrero, who has a really nice World Series in summer with this team, being a good player within the summer. Up the middle, they need to grab it, Riley Fagan Davis. And Texas will leave the bases loaded after three innings. Texas on top by one.